Alright, how's it going tonight? This is a walkthrough of making aluminum the first time. And you're going to need a whole line of mixers for this. Don't mind the bath here at the end, that's not necessary. And you also need the electrolyzer and mixer uh, that are on this side. So the first main thing you need to do is get sulfuric acid. Now, if you haven't made sulfuric acid yet, you will need a roaster with some kind of sulfide, uh, kesterite, um, chalco pyrite, uh, arsenal pyrite. Where is the, there we go, sphalerite, tetrahydrite, anything that gives you sulfur as an output. Molybdenite, any of these will work for making sulfuric dioxide. So you have oxygen as your input, sulfur dioxide as your output, and then your solid in and out depending on what it is. You can actually do just straight sulfur. If you have sulfur dust and you just want to do that, you can do that as well. It's a lot quicker than doing the other processes. Uh, but by the time you get to this point, you should be wanting to run your sulfides through the roaster. Because uh, you get the best output that way. from any of the other ways that you can process your solvents. So then you have your actual um, sulfuric acid set up here, which you use platinum or vanadium pentoxide as a catalyst that does not get used up, and the sulfur dioxide that comes out of the roaster, and that'll make sulfur trioxide as the output. That will come over here and mix with water to make sulfuric acid and then that is coming out and over into this machine now you'll use sulfuric acid in a lot of different things in GT6 um, but this is what we need it for for this particular one now the way we have this set up is the output comes out of the roaster here into the top of this machine you can see there's a pipe there that's coming out of the back of this mixer and into the side of this one. And then this is the water pipe coming in here. Then its output's coming out the back and going in the top of this machine. And then we just keep doing that, each one out the back in the top of the next one. So. For this one, we need fluoride and sulfuric acid, which makes hydrogen fluoride. You need that for the two fluids that come down here in the electrolyzer. This is your final step for aluminum here. But you have to have aluminum fluoride and cryolite. And you will make the hydrogen fluoride here which will then come into this machine and this will be doing double duty. Now if you wanted to automate this a little better you would have another mixer that would do one of them but you can do both of them in the same one when you're doing it manually at the beginning and I will show you here the two recipes you're going to be doing uh, one of them is any kind of silicon dioxide. It can be any quartz or silicon dioxide itself. And the hydrogen fluoride to make hexafluorosilactic acid. The other one you will be doing is hydrogen fluoride with alumina and sodium hydroxide. Which will give you your cryolite. Now the cryolite will come directly over here. And the 
Um, yeah, I hate that name. Hexafluorous lactic acid. That's the name of it. This stuff here. You will take it and put it into this machine. Uh, what we did was ju we just put a uh, tank back behind here. It's actually up here right now. But we just took the drum, put it back here, and you get nice round amounts, so it really doesn't matter. Let's see if I can get his drum back out of there. And we put it up here to input it into this one. And for this one, you just pop it up there. Now, the uh, hexafluorous lactic acid is needed for... Here, there we go. With five alumina makes aluminum fluoride. Now you need aluminum fluoride in here, but it has to be molten aluminum fluoride. So we actually use this smelter here, smelted it down into liquid, and piped it into the uh, electrolyzer. Uh, we actually used the drum and just moved it. The mixer's been added since. And then that gives you your molten aluminum fluoride. Now you'll notice you do not use very much of this. You only use two liters and one liter of those two fluids. So when you make them, you will get a lot of them. So you won't have to do all of this but one good time to be able to make a good little load of aluminum and then your other thing you will need is just some alumnia dust and some form of carbon which can be charcoal dust coal dust carbon itself uh, I do believe yet yeah, graphite can also be used graphene which we don't have yet um, and then you'll actually get a little bit of fluorine out with carbon dioxide and your aluminum dust. The carbon dioxide can either be put into a trash can, voided, um, or you can electrolyze it to get the carbon and the oxygen back out. This is what I suggest because of the fact that you need oxygen for your roasting oven anyways so you might as well just pull it back out of there and you need the carbon for doing the process in the first place and then the fluorine that comes out is you can basically turn that right back into uh, hydrogen fluoride with hydrogen uh, it does take half a unit you know, 500 liters of fluorine before you can do that and as you can see we've done like two batches of aluminum and we've only got 0 0.028 so it's not like you're going to have a lot of it coming out of here but you will get it eventually so that is the starting of aluminum you can absolutely make this more uh, automated with a few more machines uh, getting to where you can take out the turbines and put in motors that will be able to be turned on and turned off automatically I definitely suggest that for the sulfuric acid processing and uh, that's it that's how to make aluminum in GT6 if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, I hope that helped. Have a good one.